Well, this morning we're talking about anorexia and we're doing it through the unique vantage point of a woman who had it, eventually recovered from it, and it is now looking back at her own journey through a journalistic lens. From ages 14 to 17, Hadley Freeman lived in psychiatric wards after developing anorexia nervosa. And for the next 20 years, she lived with a disorder until she was finally able to overcome it. Her experience is laid out in the pages of a fascinating book called Good Girls, a story and study of anorexia. And we wanted to just issue a trigger warning to anybody in your household that may be triggered by this topic of conversation. Hadley is joining us from London, England this morning. Welcome. Hi, thanks, Emery. Hadley, thanks, first of all, for writing this book. You come at it through two different lenses, someone who understands anorexia from a very personal and lived experience, and also as a journalist on a fact-finding mission. Parts of this book are incredibly vulnerable. So what was it like for you, someone who's recovered, revisiting that version of yourself? To be honest, I found it almost like an exorcism, really. Mm. I'm, I'm one of those weird people who finds uh, that writing about something is a way of dealing with it. So I had all these thoughts and questions and memories in my head um, all this time. And it was only by going back and talking to the doctors who treated me, talking to doctors who are working today, and also tracking down some of the girls I was in hospital with, and then writing it all down that I feel finally that part of my life is done. Like the clo that door in my mind is closed now. And what did you understand about it? What did you come to learn? Well, I really hadn't um, appreciated how much it had to do with my fear of growing up at the time. There was a part of me that sort of knew it, but it was really going back and talking to doctors about what they've learned since. I, I was in hospital 30 years ago um, and how much part that played in it. You know, anorexia almost invariably sets in around adolescence for girls. You know, obviously there are male anorexics out there, but mm -hmm. the vast majority of people with anorexia um, are female and it generally sets in around adolescence and puberty. And there is for a lot of those girls, those young women, a real fear of growing up, a fear of being sexualized, a fear of their sexuality, a fear of separating from their mother, a fear of maybe becoming like their mother. And I really hadn't understood that so well until now. Hmm. You were writing from the perspective of recovery, but you know, on this program, we've spoken with experts and advocates who say full recovery is actually very rare. There hmm. had been an increase in women in their 40s and 50s who find themselves struggling again after dealing with it in puberty, and they feel yeah. so much shame around that. What did you learn about that aspect? Yeah, so when, one of the girls I was in hospital with, Allison, um, she was about six years older than me when I was in, when I was 14. And I tracked her down. And at first I thought, oh, that's amazing. She looks so similar to how I remember. Mm. And then I realized as she talked that she was still actually in hospital. She had a day release and she'd come out to meet me. So she'd had a relapse in her uh, late 40s after she'd suffered um, child loss. Uh, she had a stillbirth. Um, so I hadn't thought about that either, about how it, how it kind of can come back. Um, so that was very eye-opening and like you say you know this has often been missed for older women because I think people you know people on the street or doctors might look at them and think oh it's just a skinny older woman mm. but actually anorexia is a real thing and since the book came out I got an email from a journalist at another paper saying that her mother in her 70s recently died and her cause of death was listed by the coroner as anorexia she'd had anorexia all her life and it ultimately destroyed the muscles in her heart and that is something that people just really don't know about they focus so much on teenage girls mm. You point out that a trigger and a cause are not the mm. same thing, but you share in mm. your case, which is again, not the same for everybody, it was a classmate's mm. comment that ignited this illness in you. What have you come to understand about why anorexia took hold in your life? Uh, so there were so many factors for me. The, you know, the trigger for me was so innocuous. It was me saying to a girl in my class who had very skinny legs, I said, is it hard to buy clothes when you're so small? And she said, yes, I was. I wish I was normal like you. And that immediately just set me off. I just completely spun out. I think it meant, to me, normal meant nothing. Fat in my mind is what I thought, but I think it was also like not having an identity in some weird way. Um, I wanted to be the thin one. And I also was scared that what normal meant meant that I was starting to look like a teenager and boys would expect stuff from me and there's lots going on but looking back I can see there were lots of other things that had happened in my past nothing terrible there was no great you know trauma or tragedy that happened to me but things so things like feeling I wasn't able to tell people how I really felt because it would upset them too much um you know, things like feeling like pleasure was something that was shameful for girls, that you would be punished for it in some way. And all those things fed into the development of anorexia. And also my mother had been anorexic when she was a teenager. Um, 
And it's not that she taught me to be anorexic in any way. My right. mother is not anorexic. But I think in our family, you know, all families have ways of expressing unhappiness or anxiety. In some mm. families, it'll be alcohol. In some families, it might be physical violence in some way. And in my family, it's very much food for the women. There's, you know, I have a very close cousin who was bulimic, another close cousin who's anorexic, and my mother was anorexic. Right. So we express anxiety and unhappiness through food. Uh, Hadley, there's a really important part of this book where you talk about messages from parents to children who are self-starving. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage mm -hmm. everybody to take a look at the book because you have some really great study points as well as lived experience. Thanks for coming on your morning today. The book, by the way, mm -hmm. is called Good Girls, A Story and Study of Anorexia. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.